Hello everyone, Phil Baumhardt here. Now that winter is finally over, it's time to get the forge set up again. And what I wanted to do today is just show you real quick how I got my forge set up. So if uh, anyone out there wanted to make their own primitive forge, uh, they could do something similar to what I got for little to no money. So essentially the body of the forge is just a trench. Uh, you can make it however long you want to. Uh, I initially used bricks to show off the walls, but over time they crack and break. So what I did is gradually replace the bricks with large rocks and pieces of broken concrete. So the heart of the forge is going to be your tuyere, which is basically just a uh, pipe with some holes drilled in it, and that's going to supply your airflow. That'll make the fire hot enough to uh, work iron and all that. Uh, basically just any old uh, cast iron pipe will do. Uh, this short one was my uh, original tuyere, and then eventually I upgraded to this huge one that I pulled out of a house um, that was demolished, and I just used a hacksaw to cut it off. Drilled all my holes here, and uh, the reason I got one that's so long is just so that I can use it for making swords. But yours only has to be as long as whatever piece of metal you're working. Okay, so you got your forge here, and there's a secondary uh, trench right there. And basically all you gotta do is you put in the tuyere through the divider wall. So there's your air holes, that's where the uh, your charcoal is gonna be. And then you attach uh, your bellows to that end. So the opposite end of the pipe here, you seal that off with duct tape, and then I'm just gonna bury it. And that's how you determine how long you want your forge to be. So I got all the dirt filled into about there, got some bricks just to kind of hold it back. Um, and then all in here, I'm gonna fill in all the dirt in there. So, try not to get it into the pipe itself, but if you do, it's not a big deal. Tamp it down. I'm not really too worried about all these leaves or centipedes. Because all that will burn up once we get the charcoal in. So the bellows is going to be the lungs of the forge. That's what's going to provide the airflow. So what I use now is, uh, this is a wet dry vac. This was like just over 20 bucks. Um, it's got a very strong uh, blower. And all you really need is an electrical source. Uh, anyways, super powerful, uh, enough to uh, forge weld steel. Now you don't have to have something this cheesy. You could probably get a better blowing system. Uh, and you could also do with a lot worse. My very first bellows that I had was uh, just a hair dryer. So. Again, whatever you have laying around or whatever you feel like spending the money on, um, it really doesn't take much to get a bellows hooked up. The way I hook my blower up to the tuyere is just with some spare uh, shot vac tubing, you know, and all I'm going to do uh, to secure it is use duct tape, you know. Think of Apollo 13. That's it. So as far as fuel goes for the forge, I use um, hardwood lump charcoal. I don't use coal or anything like that because for one, I don't know where to get it. Um, and two, I think it's more expensive. Now this, uh, for a bag like this, 20 pound bag, this will run between 10 to under $15, uh, which I don't find unreasonable, especially if you get it on sale. Um, you know, there's other ways to get it cheaper. You could even make it yourself. Um, There, there it is, just, just regular charcoal, not the briquette. I mean, this is the same stuff that the Vikings used in their forges and all that. And they made it themselves. 
you know, coal, a lot of guys say, oh, you got to use coal. Uh, well, that didn't come around until the 19th century. So really, I don't see anything wrong with using charcoal. It burns hotter, it burns cleaner, uh, and it's simpler, in my opinion. Uh, from my understanding, coal, you got to, you know, actually have a, a, uh, a primary fire that turns the coal into coke, uh, and then you can start forming. So, you know, for what I've got going on, just a little setup in my backyard in the suburbs, uh, this is what works for me, and I can go to the hardware store, and go to Walmart and pick this stuff up, uh, so it's easy to get. So lighting the forge is also easy. If you uh, know how to start a campfire or something like that, it's same idea, if not easier, since you've got uh, a freaking uh, you know air supply beneath it. But basically, I've just got some uh, pizza box cardboard here. That's going to be my um, kindling. Okay, so there you go. That's all it takes to get the forge set up. I'm ready to start making knives now. So if anybody's out there interested in starting out in blacksmithing, it really doesn't take all that much. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, be more Viking.